Hi all the students. Today's video is a continuation of our previous video where we studied the example networks. Now in my previous video we, I have uh, taught you uh, the example networks which include ARPANET, NSFNET and then the internet and the architecture of internet. So we will continue with the example networks only and we will see one more example network that is X.25. So today the example network that we will be discussing or we will be talking about would be X.25 and frame relay. So let's start with X.25. Now X.25 is a network or was a network which was connection oriented. That means it had, uh, it had physical lines for connection from one end to the another, right? Then it was the first public data network. Now, what do you mean by public data network? A public data network is a network which is specially established for the purpose of providing data transmission services to the public so that the general public can use the network for sending and receiving data. So such kind of a network which is specially designed for the general public so that they can send and receive data is known as a public data network. It was deployed in the 1970s. At that time, telephone service was a monopoly. So there was no other network other than the telephone uh, uh, network. So the, it had a monopoly at that time when it was deployed. Each connection in an X.25 network was given a connection number, right? Now the simple reason behind uh, providing a connection number to each connection was that multiple connections could be opened at the same time, right? So in that case, when you ha had uh, multiple connections being opened at the same time, it was quite obvious that you had to give each connection a unique number so that the connections could be identified easily. Now this unique connection number enabled the data transfer of packets. So once a unique connection number was assigned to each connection, then the data packets could be transmitted or transferred using those connections. Now if we talk of the data packets used in X.25, basically they consisted of a 3 byte header and up to 128 bytes of data. The header basically contains your control, control information. So in the data packets, the three bytes were reserved for the header and up to that means maximum of 128 bytes could be used for the data. Now what did the header contain? The header consisted of a 12 bit connection number. So the unique connection number that we talked of, uh, 12 bits were reserved for that unique connection number for each connection. Then a packet sequence number, of course a packet sequence number helped to uh, reassemble the packets at the destination. So packet sequence number, acknowledgement number and few miscellaneous bits. So the data packet itself consisted of 3 bytes of header and up to 128 bytes of header and this header also consisted of 12 bits of the connection number then the sequence number for the packets, then the acknowledgement number for that packet and few miscellaneous bits. Now since I said that this is a connection oriented service, so it provided you the acknowledgement for each packet received and therefore the acknowledgement was sent using the acknowledgement number, whichever packet was received. Its specific acknowledge number, acknowledgement number was given back to tell the sender that this specific packet has been received, right? And a few miscellaneous bits. Now this particular network that is the X.25 uh, operated for almost a decade with mixed success. Now presently if we talk of the X.25 network, it is used for your automated teller machines or the ATMs that you use for withdrawing money and the credit card verification. So the X.25 is basically used for those networks which are verifying your ATMs or credit cards. 
This network allows multiple logical channels to use same physical line. So if there are multiple logical channels, they can use the same physical line using the X.25 network. Further, it permits the exchange of data between terminals with different communication speeds. That means they could be a fast sender and a slow receiver or they could be a slow sender or a fast receiver. So whatever is the communication speed at different terminals, this particular network that is X.25 allows the exchange of data between such terminals with different communication speeds. Now we'll see the another type of network which is your frame relay. Now in 1980s, as I said, X.25 was deployed in 1970s and for almost a decade, that means for almost 10 years, it had mixed success. But in 1980s, the X.25 network was replaced by the frame relay network. This was another kind of another network. So the X.25 was replaced by frame relay again this was a connection oriented network but with without any error control and flow control so it was an, a connection oriented network but it did not provide with any error control or any flow control what were the important applications of a frame relay it basically helped in interconnecting the LANs at multiple company offices. So if you have various offices of a company and different LANs at those offices, so this flow, uh, frame relay basically helped in connecting those LANs at different offices of the company. Now the technology that it uses is packet switching. So the frame relay uses packet switching technology which helps to provide a cost efficient data transmission right so the data transmission that is done with the help of frame relays is quite uh, cost efficient and the, this data transmission is done for intermittent intermittent traffic between LAN and between endpoints in WANs. So between various LANs and the endpoints of various LANs, this kind of network that is the frame relay is used for uh, providing with cost efficient data transmission. The technology that it uses is packet switching. Now this technology puts data in a variable size unit called frame. So these units of data in case of a frame relay are known as frames and data can be in variable size. That means there is no fixed size in which the data units have to be sent. They can vary in size every time. That is why it puts data in a variable size unit and these units of data are then called frames. Now. As I said that frame relay is a connection oriented network but it does not provide any error control or flow control. So it leaves the error correction and retransmission. Why retransmission? Because if there is if an error has been detected then that error will be corrected first of all and after being corrected the data packet will be retransmitted. So that is why it leaves error correction and retransmission of data up to the end points so whatever the endpoints or end terminals are it is their responsibility to do error correction and retransmission of data so this basically what it does it speeds up the data transmission because the time which was used for error correction and retransmission of data is not consumed now so it speeds up your data transmission Now the layers at which it operates is your physical layer and data link layer. So these are the two layers that is the physical layer and the data link layer at which the frame relay operates.